It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about FreeCAD. Now if you've never used a computer aided design system then you may not understand what FreeCAD is but if you have you might be familiar with Autodesk, AutoCAD, Fusion 360 those are all from Autodesk. You've got SolidWorks and Solid Edge. You've got all kinds of really amazing powerful programs out there that are closed source paid programs which there's nothing wrong with that if that's the if that's the tool that you need and the tool that works for you it's great but it's also nice to know that there's some incredible open source options out there and FreeCAD is one of those options now there are many open source options out there for things that you can do for doing computer aided design FreeCAD just happens to be one that I kind of zoned in on I started doing some 3d printing over the last couple of weeks or month and really learning how to use tools to create the things I want to print is important and not having ever really done that much, it's, it's super important, especially these days uh, where computer aided design is such a massive factor in doing anything like that. So FreeCAD is really awesome. Now, I wanna be clear, this is not a video about how to use FreeCAD. That is a series of videos and probably several series of videos because there are tons of tools built into FreeCAD and what they call work desks. For me, the coolest part is the parametric design, which is really awesome. It does some really great stuff and it helps you along the way to make sure you've got some really cool things set up. But I am going to show you a few things that I've created, whether through tutorials or on my own. Um, and it's very basic stuff. Don't expect anything like what you see here on the screen. But there are some incredible things that people create with FreeCAD and it is really a terrific tool. So if you've been looking at doing something where you need some computer aided design, doing something where you wanted to get into 3D printing or 3D design, maybe even just doing some 2D design for things that you're trying to figure out how could you make this or how would it work, then FreeCAD might just be the tool for you. Maybe you don't need FreeCAD, but you know somebody else who could use FreeCAD. Maybe you're an MSP or an IT provider and you've had people ask you, hey, do you know of any good uh, you know, uh, computer-aided design programs? Then again, FreeCAD could be one of those things that you could suggest. Not only that, I'm going to link you to several video sources that do have the how to do things in FreeCAD. One of them is, that's my favorite is the DigiKey series. It has been an absolutely tremendous series. It really steps you through the process. It makes it very easy to follow what he's doing. He explains things very clearly and very well. And it makes it easy for me to kind of go through and say, okay, I think I understand how I'm going to do this. And if I forget, I can go back and look at the video and try to be like, okay, I see where I messed up. Let me go back and try this again. So it's been really great, and I think it's just such an incredible tool. I didn't want to leave it out of my list. Now, when you come to the free, FreeCAD site, they've got this features. They've got the download, and just by the way, you can download this for Windows, Mac, or Linux. It is, it is available for all of those systems, and as far as I can tell, it works really well on any of them. I think the DigiKey videos are all done on a Windows machine. I've seen several tutorials where they're using a Mac, and I, of course, am always using Linux. And I know that it works really well in Linux. I have not had it crash. I have not had it have any kind of hiccups or have to be restarted, nothing like that. It has been a solid, solid tool. I have been very pleased with it and it's really great. Now it's at 1.0. Some of the videos that you'll see out there might be like 0.22 beta. That's essentially the same as 1.0. I think they fixed a few of the things in the beta. There's also some videos that may be a little bit earlier versions than 0.22, but they should be really close to what you're getting with the 1.0. The 1.0 was just where they really finally had a version they felt was stable, and I agree, it's very stable from what I've seen just, just using it now. My Linux is highlighted because it realizes I'm on a Linux machine. If I was on a Mac, this would be highlighted, and if I was on Windows, this would be highlighted. But there's nothing to stop you from downloading these on Linux. They're just not gonna run for you on Linux. So definitely get it for the version of the operating system that you're on. They have blogs. The blogs will tell you all kinds of really cool stuff. So work in progress Wednesday, April 2nd. So this is very recent and you can kind of see what they're talking about. They give you some really great information. I think it's awesome. They've got documentation. The documentation is pretty decent. Um, I would say definitely get out there and check that out if you're trying to figure out how to do things, how to learn things. If you're already a computer aided design user and you're switching or thinking about switching from another uh, system, then that documentation is going to be very important for you because you may have tools in the other system. You're like, okay, how do I do this in FreeCAD? It may not be exactly the same and it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's probably got a way to do things. You just have to figure out the FreeCAD method. And it doesn't mean that FreeCAD is going to be as good. It doesn't mean that the other system is going to be as good as FreeCAD in a lot of things. There are always going to be differences and there's going to be pluses and minuses. You have to kind of figure out what those are for yourself. This video is sponsored by me. 
That's right. Did you know that I wrote a novel? I did. And it's a science fiction novel. It follows a guy named Dave, who's a pretty normal guy with a normal job, who happens to fall into a little bit of a less normal job, but doesn't realize it. He goes on some incredible adventures. He has some really cool things that he has to get done. It's just a passion project. I think you're going to love it. It's an action. It's an adventure. It's just so much fun. I understand if you don't want to do Patreon or PayPal, but maybe you'd like to get something out of some money that you're donating back to me. So by buying a book, you're paying me back. and At the same time, you're getting something out of it. You can jump over to Amazon. I'll have links in the description. You can jump over and get the ebook, the paperback, or the hardcover. I'll have links for as many countries as I can get links for. So no matter where you are, you can get a copy of the book. It is English only. It has not been translated. I just do want to put that out there. But I hope you'll get it. I hope you'll enjoy it. And let me know that you enjoyed it as well. Now let's get back to the program. Um, contribute. So there's always an important part of open source, which is a contribution. And it says, how can you help? Can you sponsor it? Yes. Can you sponsor this? Awesome. I'm going to become a sponsor because I'm using it and I'm actually using it to do 3D modeling. So I think this is a really important thing for me to do. You can report bugs. So as, the, as you find bugs, report bugs. They do constant updates. So that's really nice. Um, and they're trying to make this stay stable. So definitely if you find things, report those. Make a pull request. So again, if you're a developer and you're trying to add to FreeCAD, this is such an important thing right here is going out and actually making those fixes and then doing a pull request so that they can get those merged into the code. If you're looking for jobs or funding, there's a contribution guideline. So if you want to help contribute, you want to look at that guideline. There's the developer handbook. So if you want to help develop FreeCAD more, there's a handbook here as well to help you kind of get started on that. And then, of course, they've got translations. So if you're not an English speaker natively and you have a more preferred language, they may have a translation for you already. There is a community, which is awesome. So you can check out the community stuff. They've got the code of conduct. They've got a forum, which is my favorite place to go and ask questions or try to figure things out is in a forum. So they have an FPA. I'm not sure what that is, but they have their GitHub. They have Mastodon, which is amazing. I love that they have Mastodon. That's awesome. They have matrix channels, IRC via web, uh, web chat. They have Discord. If you're a Discord user, I'm not a Discord user. I'm not. I'm just not wild about Discord or anything that's kind of one company owns. I'm not wild about that. Um, Reddit again. Not wild about Reddit. I'm super happy to see that they have Mastodon. Um, I'd rather see them have something on Lemmy. Uh, they do have Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course a calendar if you need to see anything for for events or things that may be going on. And then of course there's the donate button uh, as well, so you can do it from contribution or just donate right here. Now, it has me set to British English. I don't guess they have a U.S. English, maybe. And I can't blame them. I mean, English is pretty pretty much the same all over. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of difference here and there. The U.S. English is, of course, a little bit muddied, but it's fine. I can understand the British English with no problem. But you can see that the language that they have here, they've got a pretty good selection. So hopefully you'll find something that you're comfortable with if English is not your primary language. All right, enough about their website. There's a whole bunch there. I want to get to the actual software. But before I do that, I do want to say thank you so very much to all of the patrons over at Patreon. I truly appreciate that you want to support this channel every month. And by supporting the channel, you're supporting open source because I take some of that money, contribute that back to open source. Um, I, I just can't tell you how much that means to me and how much that means to the open source world. Even if it's just a little bit, if we each give just a little bit, it's an amazing impact on open source and it helps keep open source running. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To everybody that does a one-off, buy me a beer, buy me a coffee at PayPal, man. I, I truly appreciate that. It just, when I see those come through, uh, you know, it, it just makes my day better and it, it really helps. And, and right now I've been going through a lot and man, it just means so much when you guys do that. So thank you so very much for that. For everybody who subscribed over YouTube, you really don't know what that means. When you subscribe to a channel, it helps that channel grow. It helps YouTube push that channel to other people who might like that content as well. So thank you so much for that. If you haven't already done so, go down and click on the thumbs up, click on that subscribe button and click on that little bell for notifications. So you'll get notifications about new open source, open source software and videos that I'm making so that you know more about the open source world and you can share that with other people who might enjoy it as well. Thank you again so very much. Now let's look at FreeCAD. So if I got FreeCAD open, it's nothing special. You go type in FreeCAD in your normal way and it opens up and you get um, kind of this bar up here that says, hey, here's your recent stuff. This is just things that I've built. Um, I'll talk about these. So this was one, um, this one here I built and this is just a pen holder. It was kind of like a assignment, I guess you'd say, out of one of those DigiKey videos. So um, I just got in and used 
the tools that they had taught me to go through and make this thing. So I've got a big spot for awkward shaped things and a few places for pens and pencils and stuff like that. And uh, I had green PLA, so it is a bright green color. And I gave it to my wife and it's on her desk and she likes it. So um, yeah, I really I had fun making this thing. And there's just so many really, really cool tools built into, into um, FreeCAD that, that help you do this. This probably took me, and, and not, not knowing a lot, this is like video number two maybe uh, that, that I did. And, and the videos, you know, they're anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes long. Um, so, so yeah, this, this was video number two and I was able to do this kind of on my own and actually make something really cool. And I did get it over to my slicer and 3D print it and it came out really great. So yeah, um, a, a really cool, really cool tool there. So I'm going to close that project if I can figure out how, um, let me see. Yeah. Close that project. There we go. So as you come here, this is nice because it gives you this really great way to get to your projects that you've been working on, um, you know, get started again. So if you stop, it's fine. You save your work and you just come back and start working again. They've got some really cool stuff down here as well with your example projects. So you can see these are much more complex than anything I make. Um, these are pretty awesome. I mean, people make full engine models. They make full scale, you know, full models of, of motorcycles or any kind of tooling or machining they need. Um, and you can separate those things out and use 3D printing to print some of those parts and stuff like that. It's really kind of awesome. Um, so yeah, I love this stuff. And uh, this one, this is one that I just made because we use coffee pods in our little coffee machine and my wife didn't like having all the coffee pods sitting on the counter, even in a basket. It just didn't look nice for her. So I created this thing and it's upside down, but um, this just has slots where you flip this whole thing over. Um, and we can do that. I think if I right click, yeah, so we can flip it over and then I can drag it back down so you can see kind of how it would sit. Um, and then I can turn it around. Maybe it's, it's a little bit awkward sometimes trying to mess with this, but um, let me see if I can get this to the right position that I want here. Yeah, so you get kind of how this works. Um, there, that's good. So this hangs under our cabinet and then she slides in the coffee pods into these tracks and they hang by the little lip on the on the coffee pod and you can fit about five per track. So this holds about 20 coffee pods. So that lasts us several days before we have to refill it and it keeps them off the counter and out of the way. And it was a pretty easy thing to to print. Now, I didn't know enough at the time to know like, hey, I need to put some little things here to kind of support these outcroppings. Luckily, my 3D printer did OK. It did kind of make a little bit of a mess. But if I'd have known better, I would have made, made this a little bit slanted right in here so that it could print it a little bit easier as it went. But I actually printed it the way that it was a while ago, which was upside down um, so that it would print nicely, you know, and, and really it had this base to sit on. Uh, but yeah, I would have made these little uh, overhangs just a little bit slanted to make it just a little bit cleaner when it printed. But overall, it did really fine and it works well. So that's great. The first time I actually did it, I messed up. I, I had measured everything. I thought I had the right measurements, but I made my, my tolerances way too tight and the coffee pods wouldn't quite slide in there. So I had to had to go in and, and redo it. Um, I didn't redo the whole thing. Uh, because of the way that they teach you how to do these things with DigiKey and the way that FreeCAD works, I was able to come in and just modify um, a couple of borders and then everything kind of just spread on its own by that little bit that I needed. And it, it just, I reprinted it and it was perfect. So it was really great. I hate that I printed the first one and didn't realize it was going to be too tight, but you know, you learn as you go. So these are, these are some really cool little things that I've, I've just kind of been doing and making on my own. Um, I have a camera, so I imported this image. I don't know if it's going to open. Let's see. I don't know if I have to pick one of these or not anymore. I can't remember. It may not open. Um, no, it's got an error over here, but I imported this thing, so I just dragged it in, and I was able to to do some stuff with it. But it's it's a little thing I downloaded from from a, a site, and there's lots of little free sites out there where you can find 3D objects that people have already made. So in this case, I have a, a Railink camera that was not behaving, and I had a different camera I wanted to replace it with, but the mount for the Railink camera was already there. Um, so I needed to basically get a, a 3D model of that mount, and then make the other side of it, and basically combine that with a different mount that I had for the camera I was going to replace it with so that I could get those things to kind of work together. So I, I was able to just go find the mount that somebody had already made, the piece that I needed, and then use uh, FreeCAD to merge those together. Um, so yeah, it was really, you know, pretty great. Now, it probably doesn't look super pretty, but it does the job that I needed it to do, which is great. So yeah, again, FreeCAD is really cool for, for if you're doing 3D modeling, but if you're doing any kind of modeling where you're going to be doing machining, 
where you're going to be doing any kind of builds where you're trying to figure out like what size parts do I really need to ask for from some manufacturer. I mean, it's, it's a great tool for all those things and it's got a lot of really cool capabilities. So I, I did just kind of want to talk about, you know, how, how that works. Um, this little thing here was just a box. This was another project that they did on that uh, DigiKey thing where we made a little, a little box and it has a lid and the lid just kind of sits down on top and it, it looks really nice and they helped you understand how to make the two parts and how to make them sit together and how to set your tolerances so that things would fit correctly. Um, and it turned out really nice. And they talk about how to make these rounded corners and these chamfers on the edges. And these are all just tools built into FreeCAD, which helps you really do that. And you can see it kind of rotates around this, this origin uh, pretty, pretty nicely. And I was able to make this transparent so I could look in there and see. And so if you get it right on the right edge, you can zoom in. And uh, as you zoom in, you can kind of, again, rotate it around. And you can see there's these little tolerance spaces that I've built into it so that it'll fit nicely. So it's, it's really, I mean, again, FreeCAD's really... For me, very powerful. Now, I've never used Autodesk. I've never used SolidWorks. I've never used any of those tools, so I can't say how it compares to those. I just know for what I've been trying to do and with the really good videos that are out there for tutorials on this, so far it's been really, really, really simple. And there's just there's tons of great video tutorials out there. Again, I'll link to some of them um, in, in the description. I just wanted to kind of show you guys what this looks like. It, it's just such a such an incredible, powerful tool. I just I can't can you start to say how much I think this is just great and really getting started with these things is not complicated again 15 or 20 minutes and if you do one of those a day you're learning a lot in a, in a fairly short amount of time and you can make some really cool stuff now again they've got these different projects down here so I can click on this and I can just open up this project that they've got as a sample project um, I don't know what this thing is for but I mean there you go I opened it I could modify it I could make it something that's my own which is which is pretty awesome as well um, I did not make that. It's just something that they have there as a sample. Again, I can open this one and you can see this is for a um, front end loader, I guess. It, it, or a, uh, What is this? I can't remember what it's called, but you know, it'll reach down, dig into the earth, all those kind of things. So, I mean, somebody made this and look, this is all separate little pieces and parts and this thing's going to go together with pins. I'm guessing you could probably mostly 3D print this stuff if you had it scaled correctly and then put it together so that you would have some kind of a nice little toy for, for anybody. But I mean, this is amazing. Look at look at what somebody has done with this open source software. This is this is incredible. Again, this is not meant to be a tutorial on how to use FreeCAD. It's an it's an introduction to a tool like FreeCAD to let you know that it exists, that it's out there, and that it's absolutely powerful and amazing. And again, I'm gonna have links to other people's tutorials so that you can learn how to use it if you're interested. That's really what I wanted to cover. There's there's nothing nothing that I need to cover beyond what we've talked about. Here's all the separate parts it looks like, um, separated out, which is very, oh yeah, look at this. Look, they even got the separated parts down here for you so that you can get them and you can actually start trying to build out the separate pieces and things like that. Oh, I mean, that's just, that's amazing. So yeah, I just want to show you guys what this is. It's, it's absolutely incredible. I, I think it's an amazing project and, you know, having used it, I just wanted to talk about it and let you guys know it's out there and it's awesome. And if you're interested in 3D printing, again, amazing. I know 3D printing is a little bit expensive to get into sometimes, but these days I think you can get a decent 3D printer for under $200 and then buying the material. I mean, the material I've had, I've got the same spool up there. I've printed a bunch of stuff at this point. Um, it, it actually lasts for a while depending on what you're making and, and how you do it and how your slicer works and things like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's been great. So um, really, really wanted to just cover this for you guys real quick. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like, subscribe. Tell your friends about it so they can come along the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.